Today, we are going to visit an Iberian ham production house and find out why is Jamón Iberico de Bellota the most expensive ham in the world. What is it about the Spanish cured meat that makes it cost so much? Let's go into the ham factory of the Blasquez group to see how it is made. We will start off with the ham preparation. First, the leg is refrigerated for one night. Now, the excess and outer layer of fat has solidified enough to be easily removed, leaving just about 2 cm of fat to protect the meat. This fat removal also enables proper curing. Now moving on to the sorting process. Sorting is one of the oldest forms of preserving meat in natural conditions without artificial preservatives. You can see how the legs are stacked on top of each other and then covered by Mediterranean sea salt. When considering how long a leg should age, the general guideline is one day per kilogram, which means that these legs over here are around 21 kilograms each, so they have to be aged for 21 days. After that, the leg gets washed and aged for about 90 days under humidity and temperature control. The humidity and temperature are raised gradually across the 90 days. Next comes the brushing process. A mixture of pork fat and oil is brushed onto the leg to create a barrier and prevent bacteria from penetrating the meat. Brushing is done a few times during the curing process. Here, you can see the legs are cured in rows. Natural molds in white or green shape begin to grow in this stage. Together with the fat and oil, the mold protects the legs from excessive dehydration. Moving on to the last stage. The ham is put 6 meters underground where temperature is regular here all year round to enable a slow and stable aging process. The highest quality of ham gets aged for up to 5 years. During this period, the ham loses about 30-40% to 40 of its initial weight. When it comes to wine lovers' favorite foods and favorite pairings, is there anything better than red wine and preserved meat? So we have some Iberico Jamón from Blasquez here. And Blasquez is located in Spain. They have their own fields, their own pigs, their own slaughterhouse, their own cutting rooms, and rooms for curing and production. And I'm really excited to compare some Iberican Jamón to a Croatian ham. <laughs> <laughs> they call it prosciutto here, but also in Italy you call it prosciutto. So let's see how it looks like. So we have here today from the red label of the Hamon Iberico de Bellotto. Uh, if you're looking at Iberian ham, right, actually there are four categories, the black, the red, the green, and the white. So let's forget about the white and the green ones Ooh. because they are not they are not acorn they are not made from acorn fat um, pigs. But we are talking about the black and the red. These two types, red and black, correspond to the bellota. So the black is supposedly the top label because the pig comes from uh, both both of the parents of the pig will be Iberian breed, whereas the red one is actually fifty percent. The mother is Iberian breed, whereas the father is the Duro breed. However, both the black and the red are actually equally tasty because they are acorn fat, you know, free range peak, that sort of thing. Actually, right, you know, we sp speaking with a couple of people, some people actually prefer the red. The difference is that the white, because uh, Iberian pig is so muscular, it's actually a, it has a lot of muscles and very little fat. When you cut out the ham, it's actually just one streak of fat in the middle. Whereas the red label that we have today, right, you will see that the fat is more evenly distributed across the entire slice. People like to cut it, uh, unlike steak, where you cut it against the grain, you are supposed to cut along the fat line and the muscle line so that you have a very even line over here and cut it into small little pieces like 2cm so that you can fit it into your mouth. Unlike prosciutto, right, you usually have this like chunky slice that you put inside your mouth. So, shall we give it a taste? So the black label is like a Bordeaux's Grand Vin and then the, <laughs> and then the red label is like the second wine. You can cut! <laughs> Actually, but equal, 
<laughs> but but yeah. it, but still can be very good. Yeah, and sometimes the second label is actually more value. You know, that delivers more interesting flavors today. Yeah. Let's taste and compare. So, what do we want to compare first? Are we tasting? I think we should taste a prosciutto first, or the prosciutto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work for your pleasure, so you can see a hey, chunky big piece. So you want to show there's a difference in the how the layers look, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I pull a very big slab. <laughs> Pretty well done, Croatian pursuit. A little bit salty. Mm -hmm. It's not as it's not as dry and aged as like you get for some great hamones or something mm -hmm. great out of Italy, right? Or mm -hmm. Portugal. There is a little bit like I think typical um, prosciutto has this a little bit more like rubberiness, snappiness, sweetness, saltiness for sure. Sometimes they even smoke it, but not this one, of course. Um, and it's yeah, it's nice. It's quite porky. Yeah, this, this yeah. prosciutto is actually it's it's got the sweetness and everything, but it tastes more like just like it's in between lunch meat and like. <laughs> And like oh. and like prosciutto. I'm not talking about quality. I'm talking mm. about in flavor style. Yeah, right? it's still good though. It's tender and all that. It's just you know you chew it. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. Let's get into the real deal. Let's compare it and see what's like with a uh, jamón. It be called jamón de bellota, huh? Oh. Mmm, mama. It's so sweet and nutty. It's like wine. That's front palate, meat palate, and palate and. It's finished too. Long finish. <clears throat> it's really nutty. All it needs is tannin now, right? <laughs> <laughs> For you to like it. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, you're right, you know, there's even this lift of acidity to it. But I think what's what the mo the main flavors is the sweetness, mm. the 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 greasiness, the buttery, not greasy, but really buttery in the mouth. And it's not salty, it's really just a little bit salty. It's all about the flavors over here. It's really complex. So if you had to if you had to sum up for, for people, like the difference between, you know, Iberico Hamon is the most expensive preserved meat in the world versus, you know, normal type of prosciutto, what do you think are the biggest differences? Completely different texture, complexity. And we're not going for saltiness here, we're really going for the flavors and the sweetness. Uh, one important thing that you should always know, uh, I make the mistake to always leave your hamon out for it to, you know, let the meat sweat, let the fat melt before you eat it. Just so keep it out for like maybe one and a half hours or something. Come back to earth, dude. <laughs> it's so nutty and egg. It, really it, it, nutty. Tastes, it tastes yeah. like uh, roasted chestnuts. <clears throat> yeah, right. It has this Roast nutty <clears throat> chatness to it. Sorry, and like a I... maple syrup, a saltiness, a meaty. Oh, it's. It's phenomenal. Complex. Really good stuff. And it's going to go perfect with a glass of red wine. So, uh, are we all for a beer called Hamon? Forever. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.